for you, Um As Lucrezia said, I'm here to present to you um, the National Soil Laboratory, Net Laboratory Network from uh, Glossolan, so what we call NASOLAN. Uh, and now, so this is the strategy for Glossolan to downscale, but also you would see uh, is a way to upscale our activities as well. Um, as uh, Nokmane said already, the network is increasing. Almost every day we're receiving more uh, registration to the network, to the Glossolan network, and we're really happy about that. But of course, our aim is to uh, have all laboratories operating in soil analysis in the world uh, registering in the network. Uh, so now we are close to the 500 uh, uh, laboratories and here the two networks which are uh, here present, so the Afilab and the Rosalam, represent the two uh, biggest uh, network because they are more than how 100 lab each uh, in, their, uh, in the members. So we're pretty happy. So the problems now, um, the initial care rise, this issue is how we can reach all uh, laboratories uh, at local scale. So, uh, as you know, Glossolan uh, uh, is organized under different uh, regional networks that are the Resolan, uh, as Avrilab and uh, Rosolan are examples. So, we divided the world into different, uh, currently, we have uh, um, six different uh, networks, regional networks, uh, um, actually, seven because we are now establishing also the North American uh, Resolan. Uh, but we want to move forward, we want to reach uh, the national scale, we want to reach every single uh, laboratory in, uh, operating in the country. So to do that, we have to move forward and reach another, um, uh, like a um, larger step of downscaling, that is to establish national networks. To do that, uh, here in this, in this slide, I try to represent what is the geometry of Glossolana. Uh, let's call it in this way. So we, Glossolan is trying to downscale its activities, so to reach all laboratories registered uh, and implement better uh, Glossolan activities at really local scale and develop policies with, with that can address the problem and the challenges of each laboratory operating in, the, in, the, in each country. But to do that, we need uh, an upscaling process from the laboratories. We want uh, laboratories and, uh, and the restaurant to report the challenges and all the problems from the regional, from the regions and from the countries to the global zone. So it's like a circle, you see. We put down our policies and we want to have some feedback from a bottom-up approach. So from each country, uh, from each lab actually, submit proposal, report challenges and, and, and every, every type of issues in order to let, uh, in order to allow us to develop the best policies to address such problems. But in the same time, we need the horizontal uh, movement. So we um, need uh, a connection among laboratories at the same scale. So among the regional networks and especially within the same country or neighborhood countries. We need laboratories to share their experience, uh, to organize uh, uh, proficiency testing uh, by themselves, to improve their quality in analysis. Uh, and uh, we want them to, to talk, to communicate. We want them to share experience and problems in order to find solution to the same problems. So basically, the aim is to solve, as I wrote here, problem problems uh, acting, acting locally and the dual line. So uh, solve local problems acting globally. Uh, so we want to establish these uh, national networks. Uh, uh, so why we want to do it? Uh, because this can improve the efficacy. Uh, of gross on activities, uh, and we can then develop ad hoc problems, uh, programs in order to address um, the challenges of uh, laboratories at really local, local scale. And this will allow us also to uh, reach a higher audience, so a larger number of labs, because more laboratories will know about our programs and they will be involved in uh, registering in the network. Uh, so we want to, in that, this stage, we want to encourage the formation of uh, the establishment of national networks and, and support their creation, or even uh, help countries which already have their national network to enlarge and empower such networks. Yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, to do that, we, we wrote the um, National Network's Terms of Reference, that is a document that we prepare and that will present to your attention in order to be endorsed in the next uh, Glossolan meeting that will take uh, in uh, November 2020. And um, in these Terms of Reference is written all 
the commitments, all the, um, the points of the national networks. And this regards the enlargement of the network by spreading the voice and encourage more laboratories to take part in that. Uh, play a role in uh, implementing glucosal activities and advertise glucosal activities to all um, to all laboratories operating in the country and the other way around. Uh, advertise glucosal about activities organized at local level. At the same time, it's very important that the national networks. Uh, uh, we will organize uh, uh, national trainings and meetings as we're doing now for the regional network. Uh, we would like each country to establish a network uh, in which they uh, will be free to organize their trainings, their, their, uh, their meetings on issues and topics that are mostly uh, related to the, um, to the two problems uh, that uh, soil laboratories occur in each country because every country has got different uh, issues and topics and we want, uh, it's better if each country or group of countries talks about the, the main issues that they have. Uh, and organized training and meetings, of course, is a way to transmit the knowledge uh, that some countries, maybe not, unfortunately, not all, count, not all laboratories operating in the country can take part in global and resolute meetings. So organizing national networks meeting uh, will allow all laboratories operating in the country to get knowledge about what Glossolan and Resonal are doing because other labs can tell them. Uh, moreover, uh, again, laboratories in this kind of meeting, they can discuss about the, the main uh, challenges and find solutions together and explore financial resources and, um, and other resources to address such problems. Uh, in the terms of reference, uh, it's written at uh, national networks, uh, uh, as to improve their quality by organizing an uh, inter-laboratory uh, comparison exercise. As Christian said, they are really not just interesting, but essential to, the, to improve the quality of uh, performance from the labs. Um, so we really uh, encourage national networks to um, organize PTs um, and keep communication uh, active. This is a key issue to, to have uh, success in, on, on this issue. So we want uh, a, a clear communication between the, net, the national networks, the resolute chair, vice chair, and the global chair, vice chair, and coordinators. And of course, uh, each uh, national network will have a, a country profile. Now I will show you how it will look like. On the on global web page, uh, there, is a, there will be a profile for each country, and uh, that will be like a, a shop window. So we want uh, all uh, national networks to um to get uh, to get us um, known as soon as they organize a training a meeting on any type of activities so we can uh, advertise it on the web page and the other way around if closeland is preparing an activity on, uh, on the, that region or on that certain topic we would like national network to be aware of, of it and advertise among its members um, in this, uh, in this scenario, uh, a key role is played by the national reference laboratories. As you know, uh, national reference laboratories are uh, laboratories uh, uh, nominated by the national focal point at the Global Soil Partnership, and there is one national reference laboratory per country uh, in the 99% of the cases, sometimes there are two. Um, but the, this national reference laboratory has to take leadership in the establishment of the network or in the implementing the activities if the network already exists. So we want national reference labs to uh, take the leadership in, implement, in uh, implementing the, the network and the activities organized by the network and by Glossolan to be implemented within the network. Uh, national reference laboratories has to both scale down and scale up uh, the activities in order to uh, involve um, all laboratories uh, uh, to be part of uh, operating in the country, to be part of Glossolan and, and Russell and Russellan. And we want the, the national reference laboratories to report to the Russellan chair and vice chair and to Glossolan chair and vice chair and coordinators about the challenges of the network. Um, really, this, they are the, the ring in the chain to, to, to let us know about the, the issues of the network and the other way around, to let the the, um, the national networks members to get knowledge to, to know about the about the um, global activities and and all this is reported uh, still already reported in the terms of reference for the 
uh, laboratories in Glossolan, which is on the Glossolan website. And all now what I, what I told you is already reported there. So this is already something that the National Reference Laboratories uh, should um, take a look at. They should be active on this, on this topic. Uh, but don't forget, even if, you, if you are not in a uh, national reference laboratory, you have still to play a role. Everybody counts in Glossolan, uh, and all members should play a role in this. Uh, every single lab can make a difference. Every single lab can advertise another lab to be part of the network, still, both the national and uh, national network and the global network. And we all go. We all should go in the same direction. We have to go in the same direction together. Uh, within the national networks, uh, a work plan has to be established, and uh, this, um, this work plan has to be um, followed by uh, all laboratories in the network. And all should agree on this, otherwise the network just won't work. As we're doing in, in, in these uh, resolute meetings, we are agreeing on, uh, on the agenda, on the SOPs to harmonize, on the topics, and we are working together on that. The same will has to, has to happen in, in the national scale. We all, you all have to agree and propose uh, activities at the national scale to be implemented. And you have to, to help and support each other. So as Christian always said, like we don't have to have tap 10 top laboratories within a network. We, we, have, we want to have all laboratories at a good level. Or even the good laboratories has to help the uh, lower quality level for laboratories and everywhere, and everywhere around. So you have to support each other to find common solution to the common problems. Um, now I will talk a little bit about which are the main issues. After my presentation will be a little uh, discussion among the different uh, examples from uh, Europe and, and Africa. So uh, some countries represent the national networks, um, which are a different stage of development. Some already uh, established it, some are under the establishment and some still has to establish it. But here I summarize some of the issues, some of the main issues which are common that will also be presented to you by the other countries. So in many cases, uh, there is an issue, you know, should we include all laboratories in the network or should we make like a level of quality of them? There is a communication representing other problems because, because some countries are very, very wide and they cannot, they cannot reach uh, all laboratories operating in the country. There is a communication problem or on the other hand, uh, countries are too small, so maybe there are very few uh, laboratories operating in the country and they cannot be grouped together in a network. Maybe there are just two or three laboratories, so in that case, uh, it's better to group uh, different countries together. Then, of course, there is COVID 19, as you can see, we are not in uh, reality but virtually, and this also plays a role the, on the establishment of the, of the NASOLAN because many countries uh, were organizing the kickoff meeting in 2020. Uh, we have to postpone it. And uh, again, financial resources is always a, a matter, is always an issue. And many countries, uh, our activities are badly affected by the scarcity of, uh, of financial resources. And again, uh, the agreement of priorities uh, and the, on the work plan is an issue because sometimes uh, in the kickoff meeting or in, in the annual meeting, they don't, they can't, the laboratories not, don't uh, agree on the same purposes and then after a few months, after a few years, the work plan is lost. They don't know where to go, they don't know what to do and the work plan, the workload increases and they, there are not enough resources, both uh, financial and uh, human resources to face the work plan. Um, so as I told you, we are establishing, establishing also a database on the Glossman website for each country. So if you go, if you will go on the Glossman website on the left menu, there is a national soil laboratory networks. If you click there, there's already this, um, this home page. Um, for now, uh, so far we are doing our establishment of the networks. Uh, in, few, in a month or so, in November, we will uh, launch the web page which that will be active and will present a country profile for all countries. So there will be a drop down menu as uh, here on the right. You just click on the, on the country and information of, on, of the national networks, on the national network for each country will appear. Now I report to you the example from Philippines that we are currently building their uh, country profile. We are still um, finalizing it, but it's a good example. You see, the, how, you can see here how the, the national network profile will look like. 
So we know we will have information on the name of the network, on the members, and the, the brief story history about the network, the main activities and the lights of the network, and then the main challenges of the network and of the laboratories operating in the, uh, registering the network. Then some information on the National Reference Laboratory of the country, which again should take the leadership of the NASOLAN. And then below the information of all the members of the network, they will all be listed below with their information, the type of analysis they perform, and the type of laboratory. So if, for instance, it's a university laboratory, if it works in the private sector, is it public, and so on. In order to be aware of which laboratory is operating in which country, in order to create uh, uh, networks even within, uh, among the different countries. So how we should move forward? Um, we would like to, we want you actually to establish your own national networks, or if it's already established, we want you to enlarge it to um, advertise your activities in order to have more laboratories registered in it. And we're also uh, publishing uh, like cookbooks on some guidelines on how to establish your national network. And we ask you to review the terms of reference that will be discussed during the next Lausanne meeting um, and implement it in case you have more, some more inputs on it. Um, and we want you to help us in keeping your country profile updated. So as soon as you organize uh, an activity, a training, or some new labs register, we want you to let us know so we can publish on your country profile and let everybody know about it. Uh, so now there are three cases. If your national network is already established, please uh, make sure uh, that uh, all possible uh, laboratories operating in the countries are registered. We want you to have to be spread among your countries as, as much as possible. So please make sure to have as many laboratories as possible registered in your national network. Uh, make sure to have an adequate work plan to implement the activities both at local that also the activities which come from the Resolan and Glossolan. And keep always looking for financial resources to support your network because financial resources are never enough. Um, whereas if your national network is under establishment, please make sure that all obstacles uh, to the establishment of the network uh, have been addressed. Even those that you think uh, you didn't foresee, uh, or those you didn't count, please make sure that all obstacles uh, has been addressed. Organize uh, the first meeting, the kickoff meeting, in person or virtually if you are available. Um, please develop a work plan uh, that is uh, with another, another way to work plan to foresee the, the real workload in order to mobilize the, the right amount of financial resources and human resources. And again, look for financial resources because they are never enough. While if your, um, if your national network is not yet established, uh, please identify the, the problems which uh, uh, are between you and the goal of the establishment of the network. Find all the obstacles, try to find a solution on that not alone as a, as, a net, as a single lab. Discuss among the laboratory operating in this, within the same country, discuss about these problems, about these obstacles, and try to find a common solution to establish the network. Think about this, pollution, this solution, uh, take into account the national focal point and the global self partnership, uh, ask about uh, ask support to your uh, national reference lab, but do not forget that you, to not, that you are not alone. In case of need, you can uh, ask su for support to the, your um, regional cell laboratory network chair, vice chair, as well as to the Glossolan chair and vice chair and the Glossolan coordinator. We are really want to every country to have um, a national soil laboratory network which works, and we are more than happy to support you. But since the national network will work just if each laboratory within the network will play a role, we would like you to solve. Uh, your problems because you know the, the problems because they are at your local scale, but I think that you can also deal with the solution because you live everyday life within your, within your network, within your country, and you can address your problems in a better way. But we can give you all the support that you need. So good luck with the establishment of your network, uh, and, and thank you for your uh, attention. Filippo, so, maybe just a clarification. The, um, the webpages of the National Soil Laboratory Networks, 
these are really like your pages. So we are making this effort to create them in order for you to save budget and, and use them. These pages are yours. So that's why it's important that you help us uh, to develop the content, keep it uh, updated. It, it would be very, very useful in terms of financial resources mobilization for you and for us to approach donors for projects. Many times we receive emails uh, of uh, institutions, organizations implementing projects and asking us, uh, what is a good laboratory to work with in these countries or what laboratory in this country do this type of analysis so this would also help you connecting to other projects initiatives either ongoing on or that uh, will start now so when they write uh, concept notes you can be involved in a project so these pages are really for you this was my just just one clarification yeah, yeah sure very important really you should take advantage of these resources Everybody is like, really, as I told you, it's like a window shop. Like, uh, everybody will see it uh, and will. Uh, this is why we also put in the, um, in the in your country profile the details of all laboratories operating in the country because uh, donors or, or other institutions would like to contact you directly. So, if they're not, uh, if it's clear, we don't have any, any question. Uh, we can move forward to the agenda and I will give the floor to the first country which will present their um, uh, national networks, that is uh, Mozambique, um, which, uh, uh, yes, uh, Ricardo Maria, are you there? Hello? Yeah, Ricardo? Yes, here is Mr. Lindo. Mr. Ricardo is absent. Okay, so I will show you, I will display the presentation for you. So um, here is an example of Mozambique, of their national networks, uh, which really focusing also on harmonization of methods. So I think it will be very interesting. So do you see the presentation on the screen? Okay, Yeah, Thank please you. go ahead and tell me when you want me to change the slide. Okay. Uh, so to standardization of the soil testing methods in Mozambique. Um, yeah. uh, uh, EIM is the big institute of here in, in Mozambique, so organize a, a meeting with the, same, the different laboratory. So uh, during the, this meeting, uh, EIM get the uh, uh, two points the some of them is a review of soil testing procedure that begin used by different soil testing laboratories uh, these laboratories uh, government on it and uh, review the soil date storage and soil archive this uh, we talk about the soil laboratory information system okay Go ahead. And then uh, during the, this meeting, we had during the, this meeting we, we got some some issues to discuss. Some of them is soil testing methods and data interpretation, uh, soil testing cap capabilities of existing laboratories. We talk here about human capital and equipment, uh, data quality, data management. And new laboratories, they want support to their needs. And then we got some training with a teacher of Brazilian, uh, basic principle of classification and management. So, okay. So in Mozambique, we have a different laboratory. So these are different laboratories use different methods. Uh, for example, for phosphor. We got uh, also and Bray and Melik. These this three uh, methods have uh, different results. And uh, for tester, we use pipetta and hydrometer. Uh, organ carbon determination, we have uh, loss ignition and Wackel Beckley. Uh, to say that this loss, in, loss on ignition, uh, the big problem here is the temperature. Some, some laboratory, the temperature is around 800 and 850. So it's give the different result too. P 
pH and uh, electric conductivity. The big problem is a shaking uh, of the time and uh, pasta the pasta pasta the story. Uh, uh, to pursue for establishing of the national laboratory network, the first thing is to mapping a uh, laboratory testing facilities. Uh, take all the mapping of soil laboratory, standardizing the soil testing methods with the national soil laboratory network, building the database of stakeholder and existing facilities, Coven the presidential meeting for discussing road the map of the network of soil testing laboratories and develop the concept note for capability building of central soil testing laboratory. Uh, and we get during the uh, we got some expected for the number of laboratories network. Uh, for government, we got six. Uh, D6, some of education, and some is research agriculture. And we have got private, but we hope that we can have 10 or, or, or more. But for plan, there is no resource for supporting the initiative. Fortunately, JICA was uh, assistant support the initiative and came to end. The challenge, uh, we have here a lot of challenge. The big challenge, uh, the first challenge is human capital. Human capital, we talk here because here in our laboratory, the many uh, staff, they don't have high level like master and PhD. Here we get a bachelor degree. The other, other point is financial resource and here in our laboratory, we got some equipment, but this equipment right now is not okay. For example, for near we have problem for software, uh, nitrogen and PF. We got some problem of to buy some material, and then we get problem to we get some problem of certification of ISO, and keep moment of stockout. Why you say this this last point because. Uh, many network uh, here in our country. Uh, when the donor ends the, the 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 program, uh, this network don't go ahead. Just uh, end to. Um, uh, so we have uh, the the way forward. First, the first first way is uh, mapping existing soil and capacity, standardizing testing procedure, building the internal and external quality control, uh, immigration to environmental cost, and more accurate testing procedure. Uh, develop more robust soil, robust soil the testing information. Uh, this point is because uh, here we have some problem of uh, database. So, for example, like when we go the to take a sample in the some way, in the some place, we need to to organize the court, the geograph coordinate, the analyze physical and chemical to put in the. In the, in the database well would organize it to put uh, to have uh, to facilitate the policies to to in this, to encourage the pre private sector and then we got some problem uh, we get this way and upgrade soil testing and equipment we have via microwave and uh, dry combustion and we have the human capital development door and job training study truths and high education and say that thanks for your attention filippo i cannot hear you okay. i don't know if others can yes 
Thank you very much for this example and for working as this uh, your national network and your main issue that is related to the harmonization of methods and the unit, unit of measurement. Uh, do me for some questions from the chat. Um, there is also a hands up huh? from um, Turkey. Uh, Khan, do you want to take the floor? You have a question? Can? Yeah. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. So uh, yeah, my, my uh, concern is um, to your uh, presentation, actually, Filippo. Yes. Uh, but, um, um, but let me introduce myself just with a few words first. So um, sincere greetings from Soil and Fertilizer Laboratory of Department of Soil Science and Plant Nutrition Agriculture Faculty Ankara University. Uh, I would like to extend my gratitude to you, Lucrezia and Filippo, for the achievements of this and also previous uh, Global and uh, meetings. Uh, well, my laboratory is one of the members of national laboratory networks under the bodies of um, a general uh, directorate of plant production and general uh, directorate of agriculture reform of agriculture ministry in Turkey. And I can say that my laboratory has a pioneer position in that it is only the soil analyzing infrastructure partly accredited by Turkish accreditation agency. So therefore it's a strong candidate to be a model soil laboratory in the category of state university soil laboratories, including more than 30 laboratories all over my country. But on the other hand, uh, in addition to universal laboratories, there are many soil laboratories within governmental public bodies like agriculture and environmental uh, ministry uh, and many other private laboratories with increasing number, especially in countryside of Turkey. So looking at this situation in my country, it feels like there should be a more specific uh, frame uh, when downscaling process uh, of a glossolan to distinguish these laboratories types in that their managements and legislatives uh, they involve are completely different from each other's actually. I do understand that we are trying to connect soil laboratories to each other in terms of uh, global uh, uh, analytical procedures. But I'm trying to say that these laboratories within different categories, uh, like governmental, private, and university, state university uh, laboratories are completely different from each other in terms of their management and uh, the legislative they involve. So uh, what do you think about this uh, opinion, this situation? So. In my opinion, different laboratories uh, should be represented by their own representatives, and then they can be connected to a national level representatives in each country, and then finally to Glossolam. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your question. Indeed, like uh, the like a different type of laboratory is, is an issue. This is why we really, when we build a country profile, we really like to know which type. Of laboratories are present in the already in the, in, the, in the country, but there are some. Uh, while you mean, uh, when you, as you mentioned, like there are some aspects that uh, can create conflicts among laboratories. So the legislation, the type, of the purpose of the laboratories. Of course, university laboratories will have another uh, main different goals from the, a private laboratory, but they can be still supporting each other. For instance, organizing PT. In some activities, they can work together or for instance, uh, downscaling activities of Gozolan. This, because our activities can be interested both for private, for public labs, for all different type of labs. So the purpose of this way, we want you to establish your own work plan because we don't want all national networks doing the same stuff because among each country, they can be, they can, they can, uh, they can be a conflict uh, among the activities that different type of laboratories will want, to, want to achieve want to implement. So we would like national network to meet, first of all, and discuss about which are the priorities, which if there are some common activities that they can implement together. If everybody um, agree on just having PT, okay, that's still fine for us. Let's uh, please organize your own PT at the national level. That will be still already a big success. If there are some other priorities, please add them. So PTs, I don't know, uh, let's uh, look for donors all together. Let's uh, find common problem, common solution to the problems that everybody has. This is why the first step of the network is to discuss among, among. Please, first of all, find members. So, 
find for all uh, laboratories operating in the country and which type of laboratory they are. Discuss about your problems, about your uh, main goals, and if there are some common features, please pursue uh, them together. These are the this is the ultimate goal of the national networks. I don't know if this answers your question. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your explanations, people. I don't know if Lucrezia wants to add something on that, or is fine with it. Can I? Uh, Chris, uh, Christian, please. Yeah. 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 Uh, hello. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, one very important thing for Glossolan, it's very technical. The idea is for the, for the labs to provide results that the customer can be confident in and that are comparable. After this, of course, there are some issues of what the people will do with the results, how you are running your lab with what budget. But this is not the concern of Glossolan. The concern of Glossolan is I take some sample. I send it to different labs. Am I going to get the same result? If I cannot get the same result, to which lab can I be confident in? Which lab can I trust? So I think it's the benefit of the lab to show what they are doing, the customer can be confident in. And whatever the status, research, routine, private, public, the labs will benefit to exchange samples and make PT together. And in fact, when we speak about national networks, as Filippo said, after this, you can use that tool and, and the voice that Glossolan is spreading to show different activities. But at the beginning, it's the labs. And it, it's a benefit. You, you see, we're just facilitator to get results customer can be confident in and that are comparable. So it's a very technical issue. You see, this is the first step. After this, each network can act differently. But Glossoland is involved only in the technical aspect. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Christian. This is really an asset. I mean, like, Consider also the national networks as an instrument, indeed, as a tool that you can use for implement your activities to the really local scale, to reach uh, every lab operating in your country, and to implement your activities as you want. Because, for instance, for sure there are some activities that you would like to to implement that Glossolan cannot or is not thinking about to implement. So national networks can really can be an instrument to address your own problems at your local scale, in addition to the <laughs> to the challenges that we are trying to. To, to address at regional at global scale. So if there are not uh, more questions, I would like to proceed with uh, the example from Hungary, uh, where uh, a former uh, network already exists at national level implemented by the government. Uh, and so now they are, let's say, halfway through the establishment of the network, if I'm correct, if I'm correct. Um, so um, please, Agnes. I'm here, but I uh, can't yes, share I my I screen. Just, uh, find it. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, please go. You can start. Uh, okay. Um, Welcome to everybody. I'm uh, Agnes Nagy from um, Hungary. I will take a presentation on our uh, not established yet uh, uh, SOI National uh, Laboratory Network. Yeah, so uh, our uh, network status is not uh, established uh, yet and uh, it's uh, haven't got a name yet but uh, we have got some pre experiences for this topic. Uh, first, we used to have a government as soil laboratory network, and now we have allowed the laboratories to operate since uh, 2007. And um, we plan, uh, we will make a contact list to the non-Hungarian soil laboratories um, we can uh, use a list from our operating procedure and uh, we have a national soil proficiency test and uh, we can use the report where uh, we can uh, 
uh, find the participation list. And the third one is a website, a National Accreditation Authority's website, where uh, every uh, laboratory is with uh, accreditation uh, are there. Uh, after uh, the uh, Eurosolan and Glossolan meetings, we set a date and send email to the laboratories about that. But uh, now we don't know when uh, it will be the date because we uh, would like to organize it uh, a live meeting first. So uh, we uh, haven't known yet uh, the date. Sorry, uh, <laughs> the previous one. Yeah, okay. Uh, at the first meeting, we would like to take presentation about Eurosolan and Glossolan, and we would like to tell about the benefits for laboratories of uh, joining Eurosolan or the National Soil Laboratory Network. And after this meeting, the laboratories can decide to join the network or not. Next. Yeah. Uh, we don't know uh, the number of the soil laboratories. I think uh, uh, there would be 20 or 25. Um, we haven't got any help to establish the network, but we have some uh, problems with uh, that. Uh, first, we had a soil laboratory network in the past when there were more uh, governmental laboratories in our system, but now uh, only we are the, the only one uh, soil laboratory with uh, chemical and physical uh, parameters and uh, the other uh, with uh, biological uh, parameters. And uh, now we don't know the non-governmental uh, laboratories uh, uh, would be like to join a uh, national system or uh, not. And the second problem is a contact list because we haven't got uh, to the contact to these uh, laboratories, but, but uh, I uh, mentioned that we use uh, three type of uh, help. Uh, first, our uh, allowing system, second, uh, the national PT uh, list and the National Accreditation Authority's website. We plan it in uh, October. Yeah, uh, and uh, let's see the, our uh, plan. Uh, first, we we are inviting the laboratories to the first meeting um, by email from the main contact list. We want to take presentation about Glossolan meetings, Eurosolan meetings, benefits to join Eurosolan, benefits to join National Soil Network, for example, organization of proficiency tests for rare parameters, or discuss our common problems. After the meeting, the participants make the decision to join the National Soil Network. Uh, we plan that uh, organize an annual meeting where we can discuss our experiences and report on what's new at Glossland and Eurosam. And thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Agnes. Uh, we're we are running uh, a little bit late, so if there are no questions, I will just move to the following uh, presenter. No question? Okay. Ah, no. Yeah. Please, yeah. one hand from uh, here. From Zimbabwe, you have a question? Yeah, hello, good afternoon. Uh, I have a question for our colleague from Mozambique, they are using near infrared soil spectroscopy. I want to find out how they have done the standardization and how many labs are using soil spectroscopy for parameter, soil parameter measurements. Arlindo, are you, are you there? Did you listen to the question? Arlindo? Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Did you listen to the question? Hello. Yeah, can you repeat, sorry? Uh, 
Hello. Yeah, from Hello. Zimbabwe, please repeat the question. Hey, hello, colleagues from Mozambique. I wanted to find out you are using near infrared solar spectroscopy. How many labs are using that method and for what parameters? Uh, yeah, well, uh... I think you have a problem with the connection. Alindo? Maybe we can try to give him the floor when he's back with the connection. I think he has a problem. So we I send this question. So as soon as Alindo is back with the connection, we can try to answer you. Okay. So now is the turn of Zimbabwe. Uh, Washington, are you there? Yes, Filippo, thank you. Okay, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Um, so I'm presenting you the example from Zimbabwe, uh, which uh, is an example of the of a country that is trying to establish a network, so not established yet, if I'm correct. Um, but uh, still, like uh, Washington will tell you more. Um, yes, this is the presentation. Can you see it? Yes, yes. <clears throat> Okay, thank you very much, Filippo. Uh, I'm just going to talk about um, our Zimbabwe uh, cell network, uh, which is still in the, in the formative stages. But um, possibly before I do that, I will introduce myself a little bit. I'm the senior agriculture and industrial research chemist at the Zimbabwe Sugar Association Research Institute, formerly. Uh, Zimbabwe Sugar Association Experiment Station in Zimbabwe. Uh, maybe we can go to the next slide. So the experiment station was formed 50 years ago, and uh, the purpose was to assist uh, sugar cane farmers uh, in various areas, but inclusive of uh, fertilizer application through soil analysis. And we do analyze for foliar, water, and cane. We are located uh, on the southern uh, low, low veld of Zimbabwe. It's actually a same, uh, same arid area, uh, but uh, mostly the crop there is sugar cane. Next. Right, uh, some of the parameters we analyze in our lab uh, is uh, for, like, I think most uh, soil labs, uh, pH is an issue uh, and we do the calcium chloride uh, method uh, and then on the first set, we use what is called the resin method. Uh, this one estimates the, um, the plant uptake of phosphate. We also do exchangeable bases like potassium, sodium, magnesium, and calcium, and uh, micronutrients such as iron, copper, manganese, and zinc, which were found to actually contribute to yield. We analyze for boron in both uh, soils and plant material. And of course, nitrogen, incubated nitrogen uh, in soils, organic matter, and texture. Uh, we have got a few instruments. We are still uh, in the process of acquiring more instruments, but uh, uh, we have got a UVVs for, for phosphate analysis. Um, and uh, we just bought a new ICP or ES. Uh, we have been using uh, in AAS for, for, for a while. And uh, we also do carbon nitrogen and sulfur, the combustion method using the, the instrument by LECO called True, True Spec. And for environmental analysis, we use the DCMS because it's a, it's a concern for our, our clients who buy our sugar that uh, it, it has to be free of uh, any agrochemicals. Right, as a lab, we participate in proficiency schemes uh, under AgriLASA, uh, which is uh, South Africa based. We have been trying to be part of the web power, uh, but uh, we've been limited by finances. So we've been concerned that we don't have a, a local soil proficiency scheme in the country. 
because that would really benefit us in terms of um, savings on foreign currency. Uh, because when we send our samples to South Africa, we have to, to, to pay uh, courier services, which becomes unbearable. Right, so turning to uh, the Zimbabwe Solar Bridge Network, uh, this name has been confirmed by our coordinator, uh, Mr. Chikwari. Uh, so we are in the process of establishment and uh, the, proced or the process we are looking forward to within the next few uh, months, probably, hopefully before the end of the year, is to identify the labs which can be part of um, the Solan. And uh, some of the labs have shown interest, uh, use it in Virtual Zimbabwe. I think you've seen Tampin course, who has actually just asked the question there. The Wotiara B, SEDIC, uh, then the Department of Soil and, um, and Research Services, uh, and in ourselves, FSGETC. We, we are hoping that um, university labs will also join because remember our country is actually agro-based. So there's a lot of effort to actually uplift our agriculture sector. We have been labeled the breadbasket of Africa at some point, but our yields have declined drastically and we want to address uh, the soil fertility issues, soil health and fertility issues. So we hope that uh, as soon as we, possible, we'll be able to call for a meeting to discuss the terms of reference. And probably, I don't know whether calling the electing leadership, but uh, at least we need a secretariat of some sort, uh, which can be coordinated by DR and SS. Uh, and then one of the key issues will be to harmonize our laboratory methods, because we are, uh, currently we, we are all using different methods. Uh, and of course, the fifth and the very most important thing will be the running of the proficiency uh, testing schemes. Um, right. What uh, number of labs, as I've already indicated, we are expecting more than 10 labs to participate. Uh, and I'm sure that will be inclusive of other universities. Because the labs which I mentioned, most of them are private uh, laboratories, which were also commercial in nature. We have not been able to secure any funding for, for our activities. And we are hoping that, um, of course, that's a major issue. But uh, for now, the individuals, the laboratory might help be able to, 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 to finance the, maybe the coming to meetings and so forth. But hopefully, uh, if we get a donor, uh, life will be much easier. Uh, as mentioned by Filippo, we also been affected by COVID-19 like everybody else. Actually, this is the year when we we're supposed to be launching ourselves. Uh, but because of restricted movement, we have not been able to meet. However, we're hoping that we would use the technology such as Zoom to, to have some conferences. But um, in some places, we have got uh, network challenges. Right, so, so far we can say there are no meetings, but uh, I had taken a personal interest in the establishment of some kind of a, an association is, uh, with the uh, emphasis on the profession scheme. So I visited quite a number of labs uh, some a year or two ago, which included the Department of Research and uh, Cell Science, UZ Science Department, uh, CEDIC, uh, and then TRB. And uh, all the four labs, uh, when discussing with the management, they agreed that it was necessary that uh, we work together as labs. Uh, we also have what is called the Zimbabwe Soil Science Society, which I'm sure uh, they'll also be interested in, in, in us forming this um, uh, network. Right, and uh, again, uh, I think like all the other uh, networks, uh, proficiency uh, testing schemes should be at the top of the list and uh, harmonization of methods. And of course, where there are deficiencies, um, we will be able to, to, help, to help the training programs for personnel uh, and also encourage members to be accredited to standards like ISO 17025 and also assist uh, the labs in, in actually uh, getting those accreditation, which is actually, especially for the commercial labs, it's important that they, they get the accreditation. Uh, we're also looking forward to research and uh, method development 
I'm sure, I'm not sure whether any of our local labs are yet into MIR and NIR with regards to soil analysis. So I'm hoping those are some of the areas which we need to explore um, uh, funds permitting. Yeah, otherwise, thank you very much for, for your attention. Um, I am be happy thank to answer much. any questions. Thank you very much, Washington. Uh, I think it was a good point also, the idea to let the National uh, Soil Society or Soil Association to be part or be at least uh, aware that the National Network for Soil Laboratories exists or is establishing in the country. Maybe they can help you in that. If there are no questions for him, I will proceed with the next uh, uh, example of the National Soil Laboratory Network. It is from Ukraine. Um, Maxime? Maxime, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Let me share the screen. Mm. Yeah, can you see your presentation? No. Yes. Okay. okay. Please go ahead. Uh, here to everyone, the virtual world. Uh, and I introduce um, laboratory heat instrumental of uh, soil research methods, standard, standardization and metrology, our national scientific center. With our national web uh, now in the establishment and official name, our national soil laboratory network, UNC lab, Ukrainian national soil laboratory. So uh, I uh, can uh, tell you about step by steps. And uh, actual, I expected to procedure for procedure for establish our national soil laboratory network is first of all we collected information of the availability of speci uh, speci uh, specialized laboratory in Ukraine. After that, uh, we are receiving the contact of uh, specialized laboratory invitation we sent to participate in the network and national laboratories. So next steps uh, will be uh, within a short period of time, the laboratories got guaranteed with the in initiative to the create a network of national laboratories to register it on the websites in a profile form. At, nine, at now, at the moment, information is being collected and uh, the presence of non coal uh, laboratories in related departments, university, academies, academies, organization of various forms of ownership ownership. In the process of work, a number of laboratories were not involved in the network of laboratories due to various reasons, including, first of all, lack on the required quality on the laboratories. It means the laboratory is located in, even in another country. It's our, uh, <laughs> our difficulties in our country and analyzes a service in the offered in the Ukraine. Lack on the interested person, person for the network's profile work. And low level laboratory quality is any annual reintesis carried out in verification in our, our um, Ukraine. The next one. Oh, please. Uh, now we have in our um, laboratory actual seven laboratories and expected two <clears throat> to next year. And uh, first of all, uh, we are. Uh, obstacles encouraged during establishing our network. First, at the workload of uh, laboratory personnel as a result of lack of the time uh, to un understand the problems and in solution. So we can solve this problem uh, to require times in the resource of the execution of the documents along with the annual renal test. So next, uh, during the ring test, our number is uh, 28. Due to the lack of the sophistication for the research method, we could not analyze them because we not uh, certificate to the soap studies is this indicator a plan to the conduct and analysis. And the next one, that uh, this determined knowledge which was the uh, laboratories, it was planned to hold about five meetings within the representatives of the, uh, of the national network. Due to um, guarantees of its states for the uh, in testing, the meetings were cancelled. Internet online conference have not been yet uh, held due to technical 
unavailability of number of laboratories. Please, next one. So uh, we are planning to um, develop and approve the plan, uh, plan of the implementation of the SOAP, LOSALAN, and the national level. Discuss, I agree, on the plan of academic council, the national center. After that, after translation approvals of the SOAPs, we are planning to distribute, distribute them over the backbone network in our um, laboratories and discuss them later and via mail. After that, the distribution of the SOAP through the national network, receive the feedback from them, comments, additional questions, other, and I agree to subsequent action is implementation of the SOAP. After that, uh, we are specifying the deadlines, it's planned to introduce SOAPs according to the approval plan, conducting mandatory review. Yeah, Excuse me. And training seminal to each SOP. We believe that it's necessary to improve the level of each laboratory. Carry out the results, obtain the SOPs and standard samples. I agree with the data glossolans. Yes. No, unfortunately, COVID-19, it's uh, difficult to our country and we are trying to solve this problem now. Thank you, Filippo. Thank you, Maxim, for your uh, presentation. Uh, if there are not a uh, question, I will give a few seconds to raise the hands. Okay, the next uh, speaker will be. Yes, I try on Hi. No question? Okay. Uh, next speaker is from uh, Nigeria. I'm uh, sorry, there is one from uh, Tembin Kozi. There is a hands up. I think still the, the previous question to Mozambique. Is it easy? Yes, Please remember to mute your microphone when you are not talking to us. <laughs> uh, from, okay. uh, from Zimbabwe, you, they, they, you have another question. Is the same for Mozambique? Yeah, it was a question for Mozambique. We can try to see if it's not connected. I cannot find it anymore. Let's say uh, maybe in the end, uh, if he's back, we can try to to, address, to ask him the question. Okay. Hello. Yeah, Arlindo, are you there? So yeah, yes, I got, I got a problem of network here. Yeah, no problem. Okay, you can understand. So uh, if you can uh, quickly answer to the question of, from Zimbabwe. Yeah, but uh, I prefer to to Mr. Of the colleague of Zimbabwe can write. I can answer. Sorry. Yeah, maybe it's better. Please, uh, from Mr. of Zimbabwe, you can write in the chat uh, privately to maybe to also we can all read the, uh, the the question and the answer. Please type in the chat your question so Arlindo from Mozambique can answer you. It's fine. It's brilliant. Okay, perfect. So we move forward. The uh, next speaker is from Nigeria. Uh, Mr. Egbe Williams uh, will present uh, their, um, their national network that is on, uh, already established with uh, uh, quite a high number of labs. Uh, if I'm correct, 36 labs are already registered in the Nigerian network. So, um, are you there, Egbe? Yes, yes, I am there. Uh, the the Can you hear me? Yeah, just a moment. Yes, this is the presentation. Let me show your presentation. Okay, can you see it? Yes, I can see it. Okay, please go ahead. The floor is yours. Yes. Okay. My presentation is about the National Soil Lab Network, Nice Solan. I am Abe Williams. Ours is a national soil fertilizer and water laboratory located in Kaduna. We are a forefront four, uh, front, uh, reference laboratory in Nigeria, uh, analyzing soil, fertilizer, and water. Now, next slide. The status of our lab is uh, already, uh, of our network is already established and uh, it is named NISOLAN. Now, the actual number of labs participating, about 36 in the network now, and uh, 
we are trying to increase the network within the next the last one week about six labs also joined us and the uh, the actual or expected procedure for establishing the national soil lab in nigeria the first thing we did was to do lab data collection across the country that was around uh, August to November last year. Characterization, inventorization required a visit to all the labs to identify all the public labs, the private labs, and all the uh, 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 universities, labs and the, the research institutes and universities. We were able to register the labs into the network. Now, in that process, we were able to administer the glossolam flyers also and questionnaire. We had a prototype that we developed in Nigeria to know what they do, their activities, and uh, to be able to enlist them into the network. Fourthly, uh, the names of the lab institute head of lab, we contacted them personally, took their data, by Glossolan around March this year, 2020, to every of the labs that are participating in our network. Next slide. Now, the actual number of uh, labs in the network is 36 at the moment. And a lot of labs are still indicating interest to participate. We had problem with uh, the pandemic that slowed down our activities. If not, we would have enlisted them into the network already. Now specify, please specify if you receive any help or establish from the network. Now we, the help we received was not from our government directly. It was from the Nigerian Institute of Soil Science uh, under the leadership of Professor V. Chudi, which is the uh, uh, GSP focal person for Nigeria. He assisted us so immensely to make sure we get vehicle from the institute, travel personally to all these universities and institutes, check and did inventorization, rolled into the networks. Now, uh, the obstacle we encountered during this exercise was getting adequate information on the existing uh, soil lab and taking decision on which lab qualifies to be listed into the network. Now we overcame that by the intervention base. It was able to give us their database. We checked through the institutions, the private labs, and we were able to uh, get their data for that. Now we will note that he provided the necessary information via the database, as I earlier said. Secondly, the problem we encountered was establishing contact and reaching out to the delineated laboratories considering the vast nature of our country. Now, he also intervened by providing uh, the contact through the private labs because he has been working all over the country for a very long time. He wrote them on our behalf and sponsored the nationwide eventualization exercise to all the labs and enroll them into the network. Next slide. Now we have not had any physical meeting upon establishment of the network. The network was formed around February, 2020 and in March letters were sent by Glossolan to every one of them. And a, a plan was on to launch the, the, the first meeting of NISOLAN in the second quarter of 2020, which was halted by the pandemic. However, NISOLAN has a WhatsApp platform for information dissemination and data sharing. Uh, we actually have a mark some activities that we plan to do in the year 2020. Uh, that was harmonization of methods and the uh, training of personnel. But as it is now with the pandemic, that those activities have been shifted to the year 2021. And uh, we hope uh, to do our best in the year 2021, enlarge the network and launch all our activities in full force. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I think it's a good example.
Thank you, Egbe, again. And now the next presentation, the last one on this, uh, this item is from uh, um, Belgium. Uh, Clemens, uh, are you there? Yes. Okay, um, let me look for your presentation. Uh, I'm introduce your a case study from Belgium, and it's a good example also because uh, it's an example of a country that sometimes countries that can have uh, a strictly division into region and uh, decentralization, administrative decentralization. Belgium is one of these countries and uh, is an example of uh, a, let's say, a sub-national network. I mean, they don't have their own national network in Belgium, but the network for the Wallonie, that is uh, one, one, one of the two main regions of Belgium. Um, now, so Clemens will talk to you about that. It's a good example also because, uh, um, as far as I know, if I understood correctly, is a network where the workload uh, increased a lot in the years, uh, and you have to address this uh, this uh, this, uh, this issue like by addressing more human resources, especially on this item, if I'm correct. So, uh, please, comments. Yes. What is yours? But I don't see the presentation. You don't see it? No. Now? Yeah, okay, oh. I see it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so I will tell you a bit more about, uh, about the Ecosy Network. So I already told you just a bit uh, earlier in this afternoon. Uh, so the network was uh, established in uh, 30 years ago already, so in 1989. And so this is not a national, like Filippo said, a national uh, network, but it co only concerns the south part of Belgium, so the Wallonia. Uh, how the, the, the network was established, actually in the 70s, some people here uh, in Belgium heard about the, the near spectroscopy, which was a brand new analytical method. And they were very interested in it. They thought it was a, a very good uh, way to, to make analysis. And so they wanted to develop it in Wallonia. And quite at the same time, but also in the 80s, uh, researchers, scientists, and also users observed that for a same soil sample, they could get different analytical results and thus fertility advices. And so it was quite a problem because if a farmer goes to do two different labs, it doesn't know uh, how many fertilizer he needs to put on his field. So it was decided to create the Walloon Soil Commission in 1982. And then in uh, 1989, all these people decided to, to work together and to create the, labo the laboratory network, which was called Requestud. So we have we are quite lucky because the country is not that big, so a lot of people from the scientific world knows each other. So uh, it was quite easy to create the, the network. And so the, the network uh, is constituted, uh, among others, of research laboratories, routine laboratories, and finally the, the users, the farmers, but also the citizens. There are other uh, partners, but uh, they are more administrative, so I won't tell you about it, about them uh, here. And in 1994, the first official agreement was written between all the partners. It is an official document that um, where all the, the tasks are written, so we are sure that everybody agree on what we're working on. So it's really a work plan on what we, everyone needs to do. Uh, currently, there are five uh, routine laboratories, so it's quite small, but the country is small. Uh, you see on the map the, the location of the, the different laboratories and they do different types of analysis. So there are only five laboratories for soil, but there are more for uh, the other types of analysis. So there are infrared analysis, microbiology, manure soils, and nitrate in soils spread all over the, the, the territory. Uh, we, when the, the network was established, we got public funds so from regional and provincial levels. And still nowadays, we have regular public funds uh, from these two uh, institutions, from different institutions, public, really public funds. During the establishment of the network, we didn't really uh, had trouble because it was something that was wanted by all the, the, the partners. So it was, they were, they, 
all the people at that time agreed on creating the, this, uh, this network. But nowadays, uh, we have less and less money and people for the same amount or even more work. So we try to, to use funds of the last, but it's not always easy. And we also try to fix the priorities between all the tasks of the work plan. But I'm interested in your suggestion to overcome this problem because I guess I'm, well, like we saw, it, I'm not the only one facing, uh, facing it. And something that we have now and that was already there in the past is that all the partners don't have the same priorities and the same opinions. So we try to fix the priorities and uh, by the majority and also to make the decisions by the majority. And that leads to people, some people are still unsatisfied, but we, uh, we don't have uh, other options. There, there will always be people unsatisfied. So we have quite a lot of activities within this network. Um, first, we have a, a huge database because all the routine labs uh, of the network put all the, their analytical results in this database. So since the early 90s, we, we are uh, feeding this database. And so we, uh, we share it uh, with uh, the website that you can see here and also uh, with publications and, uh, and maps. We make a uh, comparison and development of analytical methods like organic carbon, surfer, uh, or ne the near method was developed within the, the network. And we also have a working group on fertility advices. So we discuss about uh, the, how to interpret the, the analytical result to give fertility advices. What are the current problems on, uh, on the territory and how can we address them? Uh, then uh, we have, uh, we developed uh, different tools, but mainly for sampling. So first in the 19th, uh, the network bought GPS and so all the labs got GPS to go on the field. Um, and then we developed an online tool, which is called Requa Carto. And here you have uh, two, two maps that are given by this, uh, this tool. As you might know, when you go to the field, uh, you need to take a sample on an homogeneous zone. And to help the labs to do that, uh, when they need to go to the field, so they just drew, they just draw the, the field that needs to be sampled, and then they got information on the type of soil. And the type of soil I converted into homogeneous zone. So when the, the, the sampler goes to the field, he knows where he needs to go to, to stay in an homogeneous zone to take a sample. And this tool also permit to farmers to to ask uh, to make an, an online analytical request directly to the lab. By buying the GPS and uh, using the GPS in the routine laboratories, we have a quite performant database because all the data are geolocalized, and we also have uh, the possibility to draw maps and so to follow the evolution of the different parameters on spatially, but also uh, over time. Uh, like I said previously, we organize PTs. Uh, different SOPs are also written to make sure that all the labs work the same way. We make reference materials. So we sample, prepare, and distribute reference material uh, to be used as witness in the routine labs. And we also make interlaboratory audits. So one lab goes to another lab to make audits, just like, like I would say for fun. And so we can help each other to improve and get official accreditation and really have advice uh, between all the, the laboratories. We also make trainings uh, on ISO standards, analytical method, etc. cetera. Um, and then we, uh, give a common answer to requests from the agriculture need and question at the political or field level. So we really try to give a unique message for all the territory. We also have, uh, like I said, the, so the Requestion Network uh, have different types of analysis. So we try to, to talk to each other because we can make link between soil between, with manure, uh, with the near technology that can help to answer some questions. And we also have partnerships with other agricultural structures uh, on the territory to move forward all together and really give a unique message to the users. So thank you for your attention. And if you have questions, feel, feel free to ask them. 
Okay, thank you very much. I think it was a very good example uh, because your network, for instance, develop, implement some type of activities that uh, are quite let's say, advanced, like, for instance, this database that is, can be really useful for farmers, for instance. And I think there's a good example also for the other networks to follow this kind of activities, for instance. So uh, I'm reading to the chat. If you have question about uh, to every, on this topic of national networks establishment or to one of the presenters, please uh, type in the chat or raise your hand. Um, for instance, uh, we have a question for you, Clemens, uh, from Alan Evans from Portugal. Uh, he asking, uh, he's asking, uh, do any private labs participate in the Belgian scheme? Uh, no, there are only uh, public labs. We try to open just the PTs to, to private labs, but uh, all the labs from the network are financed by, by public funds. Thank you very much. Uh, I, think, uh, I think a question uh, from Reiner to the Nigerian Celebratory Network. Um, with uh, Egbe, is there a question for you? Yes. Yes, in the chat is, um, Reiner is asking, uh, one of the objectives is to collect data from local labs you, you mentioned. So the question is, which data are you collecting from the labs and which lab will uh, voluntarily uh, share its raw data? Um, or its raw and then data if that is what you mean and allow controlled visits. And then what does the national network offer back to the labs in this sense? Yes, by lab data, I mean to say you obtain on the spot information of all the labs earmarks to join the network. Now we're concerned uh, about the personnel, the equipment, the facilities they have. Now, one of the reasons why that inventorization exercise was embarked on was to know the lab capability, their capacity, and to equally participate in a fertilizer regulation bill that was passed into law in Nigeria. It was not specifically to collect lab, uh, collect lab data as per the work they do. Thank you. Okay, Rainer, I hope this uh, answers your question. Otherwise, please raise your hand. No, very good. Thank, thank you. Thanks a lot. I understand. Okay, perfect. Uh, I, I saw that from Vito, Christophe, Tire. I raise the hand. Please unmute yourself. Christophe? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I just want to, to give some uh, comment on uh, well, the, the costs of the proficiency testing. I mean, in the, the, the other region of Belgium, we have uh, only private labs uh, doing the uh, analysis. And at some point also, we had a discussion on the costs and the difficulties of getting funds. And basically, together with all the private labs, we uh, made an agreement that we will uh, make a very huge uh, portion of soil to be distributed amongst them and they would pay for them. So all the private labs agreed that uh, to get uh, some kilograms of soil, uh, they had to pay a certain amount and we have a two times discussion on the results with those private labs to see where they are and to discuss uh, what we can do about it. So basically the, the whole system is now paid by the private labs. And uh, for them, it's a very good opportunity because they are meant to measure on every measurement run, this sample. So for them, they got a representative sample and it has been discussed. So it has a lot of added value as well. And this is one way how maybe to circumvent some costs uh, on the proficiency test. Yeah, good inputs. Uh, can I ask you, like, so you are in the other part of Belgium, you're in the Flanders, no? The video is, is there. Do we have a, a similar type of network in your region? Uh, yes, yes, I think it's really very similar uh, with, 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 with that one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, I'm just, I was just wondering that. There's another question for uh, Clemens from the Netherlands. Um, they're asking if you intend to upscale your PT uh, to neighborhood countries. Is an interesting question because, as I mentioned, in some cases, uh, uh, while some countries are very wide and very large, and this can, can be difficult to establish a network and a PT uh, exercise. In some other cases, countries are really small, so uh, they don't have enough, uh, like enough um, labs to, to perform such activity. But in this case, I think uh, in both the Netherlands and Belgium, there are quite a lot of labs. 
but still can be interesting to um, upscale APT uh, to neighborhood countries. I think also Christian uh, can, uh, can agree on that. Uh, but please, uh, Clemens, uh, so if you want to answer to Netherlands, so do you intend to upscale your PT to neighborhood countries? Uh, actually, we would like to have more participants. Uh, still, the problem is the language because we write the reports in French and uh, it's already a lot of work. And so if we want to write them in English, it will be even more work. So we mainly uh, are looking for countries that can understand the report in French. Okay. Here there is a question from the chat from Vincent Luga about the policies, the close on policies to address the problems. Okay, we develop many, many documents. If you browse our website, you can see many guidelines, many, many documents. For instance, Gloson is working on SOPs, but please, uh, if, you're, you can, if you can be more precise, which kind of problems, so we have, I can uh, address your question easily. Uh, because Gloson is work, as you know, Gloson is working on different subjects from equipment purchasing to SOP harmonization. I think it's in uh, relation to your presentation. Ah, which kind of support we can do in the establishment? Yes. Know, Vincent, are you there? You can... Yes, I'm here. Philippo. Ah, okay. Yes, uh, my question is in regard to your slides. Uh, ah, okay. Uh, you mean, so how Glossolan can help you in establishing your network, no? Is this correct? Hello? Yeah, is the question related to, to the establishment of your network? How Glossolan can help you in that? Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Uh, as I mentioned, like Glossolan uh, can help you by uh, giving you, for instance, the list of all countries registered in Glossolan from your country. So this is the first step. So we can, you know, uh, national networks are like a further step. So far we have uh, all countries registered. We have a database according to the country and region. So we have a list of all laboratories operating in different countries. So first step can be give you the, all the laboratories operating in your country to establish a, a first communication among you. Um, then Glossolan can help you uh, in, uh, for sure, as Lucrecia already mentioned, with the, uh, with the website, because your country will have your, its own, uh, every, every country will have its own uh, country profile on the website to present its activities, to uh, encourage donors to uh, implement their activities in that country, in those labs. And, um, and Grosland organization, I mean, don't forget that before Grosland, there is the Resolent, so your regional network. And uh, your chair and vice chair, I'm more than sure that they will be happy to, to support you in that, to, to look for financial resources, to look for organizational meetings, uh, writings of terms of reference. So depending on the, on the issue, uh, you, you have different people you can ask support to. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. So, uh, last questions. Uh, there is a, a hands up from Reiner. Is related to the previous question we address. Okay, no more, more eyes up. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, we, I, wrote, I, wrote my, I wrote down my question. Um, uh, I was I was wondering when you want to get in, in contact with various private labs or other local labs, um, how closely are you cooperating or in touch with the farm advisory services? I remember, um, I mean, where should the support for a national soil laboratory should come from? Um, either laboratories are cooperating because they cooperate in a national soil monitoring or they work for municipalities to investigate contaminated soil or um, they provide advice to farmers for example for fertilization practices maybe also some research projects but maybe i will put them aside but where is the funding coming from the funding is coming from mandated tasks where several labs work together and i really wonder how the experiences, for example, in Belgium, maybe also in the in the current developments in Hungary, how how the cooperation with the farm advisors is because they rely on good labs, 
I remember an excursion or a visit in Morocco where farmers receive support for fertilization if they have a, um, a fertilization recommendation based on soil analysis and a, com a, um, a comparison between labs um, from the university in Rabat showed that they are absolutely uncomparable. You can also invent figures. So the, the quality of laboratories for farm advisor is extremely important. So are you, when you look into national labs, is there cooperation with farm advisors? Yes. So this, uh, first of all, we should uh, address this, uh, ask this question to the to those uh, network which are already working because they can give a nice experience on, on where they get their funding from. If I got to understand, like your question regards where to take these funds, no, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit about the momentum. Yeah, like we have, we have received several presentations, some presentations. For example, um, the one by Agnes mentioned that they have a bit of um, struggle to find the laboratories. No? So here, uh, here my question would be more a suggestion to contact, um, uh, let's say, the national farm advisors. Uh, in another um, presentation from Belgium, we have rich experience where laboratories um, voluntarily cooperated and exchange information and so on. And I wonder whether there is experience that can be shared on how, which role farm advisors play it. Yes, I think this like should, uh, like it depends on the, the purpose of the network. I mean, uh, also what we were discussing with Cam from Turkey before. Like if the network agree on working mainly uh, the priorities. I mean, if the already is working with farmers, of course they should have a, a larger attention on that topic and look for funding in that area. Uh, this is why the um, entire national network should agree on which are the priorities, the type of labs which should be involved in the, in the network, uh, and which are the area of interest of the network. It is for research, mainly for, for uh, even the type of analysis they, they prefer to, to perform. In that case, like special funding in that in that topics should be uh, looked for, and uh, especially the type of activities that will be implemented by the national network will depend on the main areas of interest of the network itself. I don't know if it's, if it is answer your question, but because I really uh, I cannot hear you very well, so I, I think I lost part of your question. I don't know if this answer your question or not. Otherwise, please. As slowly because I really can hear you very bad. Christian, want to add something? Or? Yes, I would like to add something uh, about uh, the financial needs, especially concerned PT, so soil preparation and probably making the statistical analysis, sending back the result, the report. Sorry. Sorry, I have problem with my connections. Yeah, and so sending back the report. And I think, uh, of course, we can find strategies, as it was said also in the other part of Belgium by Christophe, that they, they try to get fundings from the private companies. But there is a general question. In fact, in 2015 was the International Year of Soils. And so the General Assembly of the United Nations, what is something I think quite important, decided that we have an International Year of Soil to raise awareness about that natural resource. And I think the Global Soil Partnership has the final objective to have comparable results at the world scale. And uh, after this, we have to organize in regional uh, networks and, as you said, downscale. But awareness is also one of the pillars from GSP. And I think awareness of the national institution uh, is very important. And when Heinar mentioned about the, the farmers, this means the Ministry of Agriculture 
should be concerned. And the budget that is necessary is very limited. And it was mentioned also the cost of the samples. The PT that was provided by uh, uh, Glossolan in 2019, the samples, I mean, that were sent, were free for the labs. This does not mean it's a cheap product. It has a high cost, incredible high cost, not only preparing the soil, not only sending it, but the hours, the hours it took to negotiate with the customs and so on. So each of these samples is a very important product and we need public support. I think Glossolan, the regional networks and the national networks need to explain that this is made to have an international uh, assessment of the soil resources. And this is extremely important so that the Ministry of Agriculture are involved in the different countries. But Rainer mentioned also urban, I think it's Rainer or someone else about the urban soils and the contamination. M more than half of the population Uh, we are mute, Christian. We can hear you. We cannot hear you. Right? Yeah, sorry. I said the half of the population now is living in the cities, and we have not in the current Glossolan uh, 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 assessment or measurement of soil parameters related to chemical contamination, uh, heavy metals, or such type of contamination, because the SOPs, in fact, are. Uh, yeah, now we can hear you. Yeah, sorry for that network problem. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, so uh, not, not many mentioned, but we will be working on this. And so this means also Ministry of Environment and other, other state organization or institutions must be involved. And I think this is also something that the GSP is doing with the pillar. Uh, dedicated to awareness and I think it's also important to try to make the the data available and the people sensitive to the, the work that is done in the lab. Usually you see it's not very no, not very fancy, not very trendy when you show uh, results of a PT. So, but the people must understand how important it is to have good data for good decision making. And this, this is really a challenge that is okay addressed in another Glossal NPT. This is why the, the problem that the people have at the national level is also something that we try to solve at international levels. And hopefully it will help also the national networks later on. Sorry for a little bit long answer, but I, I think it, it's a very important issue. And we have seen how much final constraints are limiting the what is possible to do at the lab level. Yeah, I think it was useful your this clarification. Thank you very much. I think we are running late, uh, Roberts. I think we should move forward to the last presentation of the day. Yes, so again, thanks everybody to all presenters and participants in the discussion. We now move to the last item in the agenda for today that uh, is a kind of case study from Portugal. We have uh, Mr. Alan Evans from A2 Analysis Chemicals uh, uh, of Portugal to tell us about uh, the experience of their laboratory. So a small fish in a small sea, the perspective of a private soil testing laboratory in Portugal. Alan, the floor is yours. Okay, um, I hope everybody can hear me. Good, uh, I'd just like to say, uh, First of all, thank you very much for the opportunity to present uh, at this meeting. Um, we haven't been members of uh, Glossolan for very long, so we, we thank you for the opportunity that, that you've given us here. Um, so I'm going to present to you today a bit of our experience that we've had in Portugal here uh, over the past years that we've had our uh, soil analysis lab. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, so just a quick explaining uh, explainer. Um, my name obviously isn't uh, Portuguese. I don't have a Portuguese accent because I'm originally from from England, um, and I moved to Portugal uh, in the year 2000, and I've been living and working here ever since. In 2000, uh, we 
uh, founded a privately owned soil analysis laboratory, which is located in a city called Guimarães, which is in northern Portugal. What motivated us to start this laboratory was really after we did a, a market survey that there wasn't really um, any response time that was good for the, the Portuguese farmers. When they, they wanted their analysis done, they seemed to be waiting uh, for very long times until they, they got the results, which we thought wasn't uh, particularly acceptable. So what we did was we invested in um, high quality equipment, such as uh, dry combustion, ICP, microwave digestion, to provide this uh, rapid analysis and turnaround time for the Portuguese farmers. We started our uh, laboratory with just two people working there. And over these years, it has grown to, to sustain eight people here working in our laboratory. Our main type of analysis are soils, vegetable matter, uh, water, growing media, soil improvers, among other things. For the past few years, we've also been working on getting the uh, laboratory accredited, but this has um, been a bit more difficult than, than we perceived uh, when we first started. Next, please, thank you. Uh, just a little bit of background from what I could find on the internet about farming in Portugal, just so you can get a little bit of an idea of what's going on here. Now, these numbers are from 2016, so there might have been a change over the past few years. Um, but around uh, 2016, we, there were about 26, 260,000 uh, farms in Portugal, registered farms. And about half of these, more or less, were dedicated to the production of arable crops. Those are the, the people that we really wanted to, to, to get in contact with and try and get them to do the soil analysis. There were another 28%, which were just uh, cattle farmers. And then there was 22%, which were a mixture of cattle and crops. Next, please. Thank you. Uh, just here we have a, a small table just to give you an idea of the time, the, the, the size of the farms that we're, we're talking about here. Uh, the area of the farm, uh, we have most of them, about 70%, 75% are all farms under 20 hectares. So really what we're talking here is quite small scale farmers, uh, mostly producing um, food and for the most part, it is for uh, exportation. We do have a few farmers um, with greater than 1,000 uh, hectares of land, but as Portugal is a, a reasonably small country, then we don't have uh, that many farmers uh, with greater than 1,000 hectares of land because there really isn't that much space for them to, to fit into. So this is an approximate state of affairs of laboratories in Portugal. Some laboratories uh, do not offer all the services we might associate with soil analysis. Um, so this is just a, a really a brief resume of what I could find. So there are about four small privately owned laboratories, uh, 17 colleges which have farming courses which offer simple type of soil uh, analyses, 14 universities which have farming courses associated with them, which are able to offer a great deal uh, of types of services. There is one state-owned laboratory. Now we have three international laboratories, which are they're not situated in Portugal, but they have representatives in Portugal and their representatives will go to the farmers, collect the soil samples and send them to uh, other laboratories outside of Portugal. And there are also a couple of laboratories which are associated with fertilizer companies. So as you can see, for a reasonably small country, there are quite a lot of laboratories which are working in one form or another. So problems that we encounter as a private laboratory, which has really no, we have no connection to the, the, the public uh, laboratories who may have other types of problems. So what we find is that there are probably too many laboratories in Portugal for the, the number of farmers that are present. Uh, all things being equal, we're talking here about 6,000 samples, a round number, from each farm. 
So that really isn't sustainable from a, a business point of view and has made the, the work that we do a lot more difficult because if we're not turning a reasonably large profit every year, then it's much harder to buy equipment, invest uh, what in these equipment, and then bring new services to the Portuguese farmers. Another thing that we found is that there is an, uh, a lack of education here about the usefulness of soil analysis. A good percentage of our clients are really only interested in the soil analysis because they needed to get uh, subsidies from the European Union. They're not particularly interested in the fact that the soil analysis can be used as a tool to increase their production and increase the environmental uh, impact that their farm has. And, and part of this problem is also some of the government rules here in Portugal, which can actually dissuade people from performing regular soil analysis by only, for instance, obliging these people to do the, the soil analysis once every four years, which the people who really who, who are just interested in having a little bit of paper to say that they've done the soil analysis is not really very good for sustaining and developing uh, soil science in Portugal. One of the other things we have uh, here in Portugal is that we have quite a lot of unfair competition. I'm, I'm not sure if it's the same in, in other uh, private companies um, in other countries as well. Uh, but one of the things we found that the, the university and state-run laboratories are obviously able to apply much easier for the European grants and state grants for their research purposes. Um, and then these research, these machines which were bought for research purposes are then used to uh, not only conduct research, but they're also used to create more money for the laboratories um, which then removes the, 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 the part of the power that the, 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 the privately owned laboratories have to capture, capture their clients because the, the publicly owned laboratories are able to pra uh, practice soil analysis prices which privately run laboratories uh, find it almost impossible to compete with. And once we're talking about a relatively poor country here in Portugal, then normally the people or the farmers will sometimes opt for the, the, the cheapest choice uh, rather than one of the, the, the more expensive choices. And also by us paying our taxes here in Portugal, the privately owned uh, laboratories are in a certain way also uh, subsidizing our competitors. Next slide, sorry. Thank you. Uh, another problem we found is that uh, accreditation here in Portugal is extremely expensive. The, the Portuguese uh, accreditation agency is obviously the only one here in Portugal. Uh, so they pretty much are able to set whatever prices uh, they need. And if we are trying to turn a profit and also serve the, the farmers in the best way possible, um, and the accreditation being extremely expensive to acquire and maintain is also made more, much more difficult when we are not able to practice prices which would turn the, the, the accreditation into something which was routine and not particularly damaging to the, the company's accounts. Another problem which we faced is that the, uh, when we tried to, to begin our process of accreditation, that the accreditation assessors in Portugal don't really have any specific experience in soil analysis. They have experience in water analysis and food analysis. There are lots of things which are in, in, uh, that are similar between the, the process of accrediting a water analysis and food analysis, but I'm sure you'll agree with me that soil analysis does have some uh, specific details that really the uh, assessor would need to know. I can just tell you one of the first experiences we had um, with one of these assessors is that we had a, a we have our ICP uh, in our laboratory and the assessor came to me and was asking me uh, to show him the metallic parts of the instrument to prove that it wasn't contaminating the analysis samples we were doing. And um, he was quite shocked to learn that all the parts which carry the sample from the, the tube 
to the, the plasma itself are all made of plastic and glass. And this was the person who was supposed to be helping us with the accreditation procedure. Perhaps the, the most complicated thing we found about the accreditation procedure is the lack of software that re for reporting soil analysis results. Um, because we have somebody who's working with us, uh, a computer technician who is developing or um, uh, trying to help us develop a program which he already has a base for to, to create a program which is more specific for soil analysis results because it's not possible uh, to use his program that he has for water analysis and directly adapt it to soil analysis results. As we have, as we have lots of different calculations to do, some of the, the parameters for soil analysis have no real comparison uh, with water or even food analysis. Um, so this is another problem that we've have, continue to have and really need some help in solving. So uh, in this next slide, there are some ways that I would just like to see if Glossolan can possibly help us um, uh, with the these problems. Just some ideas, because like I said at the beginning of the presentation, uh, we haven't really been part of Glossolan for too long. We're not exactly 100% sure what might have been discussed in, in other meetings. Um, but one of the things that would really help us is maybe if we had some, this could also be done by Glossolan or even the, the National Soil Laboratory, uh, the National Soil Network, sorry, which could maybe uh, produce these uh, posters and flyers, which could be sent to the farming associations and um, to other, other places where farming is practiced here in Portugal, just to maybe educate the farmers a bit more about the, the usefulness of a soil analysis and not to see that as an, an expense, but really as a tool, just as a tractor, they use a tractor as a tool. The soil analysis can also be seen as being uh, a tool to help them produce uh, more fruit, vegetables, whatever they would like to produce. Uh, the second one, uh, if Glossolan or somebody has any ideas on how to eliminate these unfair back business practices, which, which we believe that we're seeing, that uh, equipment which should be, has been bought with funds supposedly used for research are being paid, are being used to uh, analyze paid samples, uh, which the private laboratories here in Portugal have great difficulty uh, competing. Just to give you a, a, an example, there are some laboratories here for a simple soil analysis would be paying five euros when, and the client would have to pay five euros for that, for example, when for us as a private laboratory to be able to, to, to practice those prices is nearly impossible once we, we been, begin calculating equipment costs, personnel costs, uh, social security, and all these things, it is impossible for us to compete uh, with those prices. And the only reason that those prices are able to be uh, used is because the equipment that they are using has not been paid for by them. Also, another thing uh, which would be interesting for not for us, uh, and perhaps other laboratories here in the network, is if uh, Glossolan, the network, had possibly some trained soil uh, accreditation experts who could be used possibly by um, internet meetings to um, help uh, debate various problems with which we have with the analysis, suggest solutions, and maybe uh, just be used as a um, let's say uh, an, an extra helping hand when when laboratories try and go through the accreditation process to have maybe two or three specialists who we know that we could turn to uh, and have our questions answered instead of turning to somebody who's perhaps an expert in water analysis or feed analysis who might not be able to answer our questions uh, as easily. Obviously I think the um, the standard operating procedures that Glossolan are developing uh, at this precise moment in time will be very useful for laboratories which are trying to gain accreditation because then we have one standardized method which can be used and all laboratories will in that case all be on the same page. And so just one last thing uh, that maybe could be interesting as well and useful is that whether it would be possible for Glossolan or somebody connected to that develop a software program or database that the soil laboratories could use 
to store and report the results. So all of the laboratories could in some way be harmonized all using one certain specific program. A little by, bit like the, the previous presenter, uh, Clarence in, in Belgium um, had said, um, that might be where they have a single database for all their national samples, where the results can be input and they can be, and they can be accessed reasonably easily by anybody who uh, works in, in, the, in, the, in with Glossolan. And the last slide, please. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention. And once again, thank you for the uh, possibility to present a few of our problems and, uh, and our solutions that we, uh, we have encountered in our uh, years analyzing soil here in Portugal. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, um, Alan, for your presentation. Is there any question from the audience for Alan? Either in the chat or by raising hands? If not, uh, I would say that, uh, yeah, I don't see any question. Uh, that, Yes. Uh, so I, I, I cannot react so fast finding my hand, but I just wanted to acknowledge this wonderful presentation. Um, it was very extremely helpful to hear this view, um, also to get an idea of the laboratory situation in Portugal. For individual aspects, um, there are a couple of things to exchange. Uh, I would say maybe also outside of this meeting. Um, but I, I want to um, congratulate. This was, was very, very interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other remarks? If not, I would like to... Christian, you wanted to say something? Yeah, just something about the cost and the training of assessors. I think this is one issue here with Glossolan, I think everybody knows this, and ISO is just one way to demonstrate that you have competence. And I think not many has answered in the chat. <laughs> we can't hear you. Yeah, uh, not many has answered in the chat that you have different ways to demonstrate your competency. And I think this is what we try to do. I mentioned already participative work, but the expert making the ISO standards or being for assessors, uh, the sole scientists, the people from the lab, and sometimes they are not involved. And this is what we, I think Glossolan is trying to do through this network to find the people having the skills and to help the, the people. And probably in Europe, the people forget too easily that, yeah, there is a high cost because many labs or universities have a lot of budget, but it's not like this worldwide. So, of course, I think once again, GSP, FAO and United Nations try to improve the things. But after this, for the national problems, specific national problems, it's uh, impossible for Glossolan and for GSP to do anything. But I agree with Rainer. I appreciated also very much your presentation, showing the technical aspect and so also economical and human aspect. And it was very good. Thanks for your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Um, if there are no further remarks, I would like to close the meeting for today. Thanking again all presenters, all moderators, and all participants that ask questions and intervene in the discussion. I'm just showing you the program for tomorrow. Very interesting. It's about uh, equipment. And uh, with this, I, I wish you good evening and a good rest of the day. Thank you very much. And see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Oh. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.